I'd like to ask um, Stephen Bennington from Q5D Technologies um, to give a talk on some of the work they've been doing on wiring harnesses. Yes, thank you very much for the invitation. It's, uh, it's great to be in this august uh, company. I hope everyone can see that. Um, I'm going to assume you are and, and, and crack on. So um, I'm running, we set up and run a small company called Q5D Technology, which is aiming at uh, ad using additive techniques to add electrical function to, uh, to uh, products. So it's not electronic, so I feel like I'm you know, slightly out of place maybe, but, uh, but I, I think it's still an interesting technology for this, this uh, forum. The reason we went, we tried to, to do this was that um, we realized if you wanted to use additive manufacturing techniques and get into uh, mass manufacturing, then you needed to, to typing. But we realized that for wire, um, the uh, uh, everything's done by hand. So on the, on the right hand side there, you can see the layup of uh, how they do wiring harnesses in automotive on these huge pin boards with large numbers of people. And so the assembly of the wiring harness is done by hand and then the installation into the vehicle is done by hand. And that's the same across all sectors, whether it's in, uh, it's in aerospace or uh, uh, in your fridge. And it's been done the same way for 100 years. It's crying out for some uh, method of automation. Not just that, uh, the industry is in, is in flux and in change. So uh, everything's, of course, increasing in electrification, not only across the electrical uh, uh, um, uh, sectors, sorry, the, the vehicle vehicle sectors, but also into into aircraft. I mean, they've switched from uh, from in all to electrical servos. Um, but also, your um, the differentiation of your product these days is based on how good the stereo is, and and so that incorporation of, of uh, IT into product, and now the incorporation of IoT into products means that the uh, complexity of your wiring is going uh, up very, very quickly. Not just that, um, where the, the harnesses are usually manufactured in the Far East, labor costs are increasing and supply chains are, are increasingly insecure. And at the same time, the wiring harness companies are being told that they have to reduce weight. So they've got to increase the functionality of their wiring harnesses, but they've got to decrease weight. And they cannot increase costs despite the fact their labor costs are increasing. So they need new technologies. Uh, and you can see it in a, in, a, in a car, the complexity of the wiring is very, very high. Upwards of 50 kilograms of the, of the vehicle is, is actually wiring. It's the slowest, most labor intensive and most costly part of the uh, manufacturing process. And it's the most common point of failure. It's the bit that where all the recalls come from, in, whether it's, whether it's in, in your white goods in your house or, or whether it's, uh, it's failures within an aircraft. It's usually the wiring that fails, not the mechanical parts. So it's an area that really does require automation. So we developed this uh, machine uh, a few years ago now, which is a five axis uh, platform. This is the first one we made on the right here, which was uh, uh, something that we've, we've now sold. We're just building other ones now. Um, but it's a high tolerance five axis platform, a bit like a CNC machine, um, but it has an end effect changer so that you can put different heads on the, uh, uh, on the, on the arm. And so we have a, a head that can uh, embed terminated wiring into thermoplastics or co-extrude with thermoplastic so you can adhere wiring uh, to a surface. It can do five axis uh, uh, additive, plastic additive, so uh, you know FFF, FDM, what you want to call it, to add insulation or dielectrics or just create structural components. It has a high quality laser sintered printed electronics, well it hasn't yet, we're just uh, sort of building that at the moment and designing that at the moment, but you can do uh, or will be able to do soon to do high quality uh, laser sintered printed electronics. Um, and then uh, you have, of course, the, the usual pick and place to add the surface mounted components. So what, we're, we, what we do is to take an existing component. So you could, of course, create something uh, from scratch using additive manufacture, but that is hopelessly slow and uncompetitive compared to other manufacturing techniques. So we like to start from something else that typically is a, an injection molded part or it's a composite panel, big curved composite panel or it's a blow molded piece of uh, thermoplastic or uh, it's a piece of um, pressed sheet metal, whatever it is, we take that, mount it on the machine and then add electrical function to it. So the first one is the sort of the additive part. And I think this is becoming increasingly um, of interest within the uh, additive um, market is moving to five axis compared to the sort of usual 2D layered uh, way of doing uh, additive. 
uh, it's a lot more flexible. I mean, to do a structure like this, this thin walled uh, structure with these overhangs, of course, you would have to print. Uh, I'm waving my arms around, but I think I've turned the camera off. You'd have to print a whole bunch of support structure uh, on onto this uh, to, to be able to, to print the overhangs. But of course, with a five axis machine, you're always printing onto a solid. And so you can print these parts much, much more quickly, something like five to ten times uh, uh, quicker than you can with the standard 2D methods. The parts are stronger because you can align the planes in any direction you like. So you can if you know the, st the stress directions, you can you can align them correctly. But for our purposes, we can create smoother surfaces onto which we can print electronics. Um, so it's it's quite an important uh, feature. It's something that we actually do need um, for our for our technique. And of course, the five axis nature of the uh, the printing head means that uh, we can take an existing component uh, and we can print onto it. We've chosen this five axis uh, uh, method rather than a, than a robot arm, which is where most people are, are, are doing it, because for the same uh, for the same price, you can get 10 times the accuracy. So we we can and we calibrate this machine to 10 microns and it, we operate it at 50 microns. And to get that level of accuracy with a robot arm, you have to spend a lot of money. Um, <clears throat> We can embed wires. This is embedding wire, just bare copper, but we can actually adhere any kind of wire onto a surface. And this is really important. Although we use printed electronics a lot or wherever we can get away with it, um, you can't do power electronics with that. If you need to run some current through um, for, for your application, then you need solid copper. Not only that, many of the markets that we operate in, like aerospace and automotive, they're highly regulated. And you have to use the wirings that are the wire that is um, ratified uh, and the terminations that are, are already used in that in that sector and have been tested for that sector. Um, and so printed electronics often does not cut it. You, you know, embedding the wires or adding the wires to the structure is necessary. Um, this is we, we typically use normal printed electronics with syringe pumps and jetting heads, and they're great. They work beautifully, um, but they have to be cured typically. Uh, that means you have to take the piece off the bed of the machine, put it in an oven, heat it up, uh, and uh, um, uh, you know, cure it, and then put the machine, the, the part back on the machine to carry on the process. And the chances are, once you've done that with a thermoplastic, it's going to be a different shape, or you're not going to mount it back in the in in the correct place, and the whole thing's going to go wrong. With a laser sinter technique, um, you can actually sinter the paste that you've just printed down on the fly with a laser that's mounted on the machine, uh, all in one go. Um, and not just that, the quality of the printing is very high. We can get um, typically to something like a third of the conductivity of the metal that you started you started with. So whether that's silver or copper. And of course, copper. I mean, uh, the you know, so copper is quite difficult to to get to work with uh, with printed electronics because of the uh, problems with the oxide layer. Um, um, but that's not a problem when you've sintered it. The oxide is is driven into solution and you, you end up something which is highly conductive. And so we can swap out the very expensive silver with uh, with uh, good quality copper um, printed electronics. Software is absolutely crucial. I mean, OK, making the hardware is not that complex, although we like to pretend it is. Uh, the complex part is making sure the software works. We work with a, a bunch of different software houses, including um, writing our own. Um, this is a, a, um, the digital twin that we uh, we ha were working with on with uh, Siemens. And what's nice about this particular digital twin is that it understands the additive process uh, and can understand collisions not just between the head and other components, um, but with the head and the printed part that it is creating, um, which is unusual, uh, and that's vital. So the CAD CAM, the idea of being able to, uh, you know, have your CAD drawing, pass that into some kind of CAM, which does the calculates the um, uh, the tool paths and then passes it onto the machine so you can create it. Is 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 really um, really vitally important, um, and that leads on to things like being able to do finite element analysis. Normally, finite element analysis is only done on the structural part of a product. In our case, it will have to be done on the electrical part subsystem as well, uh, and that is new and different and really quite revolutionary, uh, and will in principle improve the quality and safety of the products that we're creating. So. I mean, I, I could go through all the different benefits, and I think it's probably not, um, it, we haven't got time for that really. But just to say something about the idea of improved safety, because we are embedding the electrical conductors deep within the product, then it's protected against chemical and physical damage. Although, you know, it's a cute little mouse there, 
The typical fi um, failure for wiring is wiring fretting against each other and damaging the uh, uh, the insulation or just being damaged by humidity and chemicals, uh, embrittling and then cracking and then getting the arc over event and ultimately a fire. In our case, the wires uh, or the printed tracks are, uh, cannot move, they're embedded, they cannot come close to each other to fret against each other and they're over molded so that they're, they're, they're protected. So all of this uh, um, um, improves the, uh, the robustness and safety of the of the wiring. <clears throat> so I'm going to quickly finish with a, just a case study just to show you how you might make a product on a, on a simple drill like thing here. So you take your injection molded part and then you add the printed tracks with the with the uh, uh, um, the laser sintered uh, track generation. Add your components that are with a pick and place that are attached to that. And so you can spool out the wires um, and uh, lost you for a second there. Hope you can still see me. Um, you can then uh, over, uh, sorry, print down the uh, put down the wires. And if they've got a crimp on the end, you can you can add that to a to a termination or you can use the uh, I don't know if you're familiar with them, but the insulation displacement type connectors, the IDC type con uh, connectors with a blade and press the wire directly in. You can and that means that you can do all the power components, in this case, the motor. You can then over mold those with polymer to protect them and stop them being trapped when you bring the clamshell together and then use the pick and place to add all the other components. Now, of course, I can carry on, but uh, you know, I've given my, have my 10 minutes and uh, uh, I think I, I'm gonna stop there. And if anyone is, 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 is interested, then, then please, uh, please get in touch. We would love to, 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 to talk to you about collaboration and, and perhaps even selling you something. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stephen. That was a really interesting um, talk.